สวัสดีครับ Howdy We meet again This is Chef Pan w a r a g o o n from Thai Essence I'm a chef instructor, cookbook author and a former restaurant owner This is lecture number three I thought speak English already This is lecture number three The topic is general knowledge in Thai cooking Today I'm going to talk about some gluten-free sweet cartel. You know how do you use the sweet, the sugar, cooking oil, uh, measurement, and food in the medicine, and then cooking equipment, as well as and cooking concept, and the cookbook layout. Hopefully, you learn something in this uh, lecture. It will it will be very interesting if you not due to the Thai cooking. Here we are. So, in Thai cooking, a lot of people say, "Oh, Thai cooking had a lot of wheat." Uh, depend on the ingredient now. Lately, because people try to cut corner to get the cheap, you know, and then the wheat and the barley and ray, those type of thing, it's cheap. So, somewhat because in Thailand we don't use them that much. The Chinese, the Japanese use them, but we want to un we want you to understand that when you talk about the gluten free, wheat, barley, and ray is not gluten free, so. The, We're going to go into a little bit of gluten, what it does to your body. So, in Thai cooking, you know, you use flour, you use noodle all the time when you try to uh, cook a lot of things. It's a component of the cooking, you know, part of the, something that they call for. But you can have a lot of choice. If you do the flour, you have rice flour, sticky rice flour, you know, corn flour, all these things that pretty much common in Thai cooking. And uh, it's some people that they do, you know, all purpose. If they're not, they're not aware of gluten free, they will use that. If the, you have to do gluten free like my food, it's hundred percent gluten free. So we have to select specific, you know. What kind of flour we could use? That what the four, three or four things that we use that I use uh, for the Thai cooking. You know, the rice flour, sticky rice flour, tapioca flour, and the corn flour. Then when you go into the noodle, the noodle is you, of course you have rice come from the you know white rice, brown rice, whatever you do there now. The cellophane that make from uh, cellophane noodle it. Make from the mung bean or some kind of rice, you know. And some people do sticky rice. That sometimes you find it. The sticky rice noodle is quite good. And then you have a tapioca noodle. You have kale noodle. That those things that make it into the rice. And the mung bean and c h a o f a n That's what I want to. People to understand the chow fan is strictly from the rice, and the chow fan is Chinese. It is everywhere in the world. You know, chow ming, chow fan. That's the difference. And if you talk about chow ming, you have wheat. If you talk about chow chow fan, you got rice that gluten free. So, but in some company, you have to read the label now. It's some company that. In order to get the hardening or it more, you know, tough of the noodle, so they add some of the wheat flour in the all-purpose flour, you know, to make it stronger, those type of thing. But if the real one, it no, no, no wheat. If the common wheat you see in uh, cooking, you got. 
pasta, you got ramen, you got saba, udon, you know, so many. This is a lot of Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese. No, I don't think so. Sometimes the Vietnamese doesn't do that, but uh, some they do. And Italian cooking, those kind of thing. It's a lot of, uh, you know, Western that you eat more than rice. So egg noodle, be careful, egg noodle eat wheat. Some people, oh, gluten free, but some they do sell some gluten free, but it's pricey for no reason. So, you know, Hokkien, you know, buckwheat, you know, versus me, all this pretty much it, it automatically is a wheat that they use. And then just remember that the chow mein is wheat, make it, make it from wheat. If you in doubt, if you don't ask them or they, you ask them and they don't understand it, they just wherever you go in the world. So the higher altitude, you, you know, they grow wheat. In Thailand, they, they, they don't do them that much because it's the, too much moisture. It needs to be dry and high altitude. So it grows to the sea ocean like Thailand. We, do, we grow rice, all kind of rice, beautiful rice. You know, especially the jasmine, we are the one in the world that really can do it very well. And another thing is gluten net and gluten free is different. The gluten net something sticky. The gluten free is something it's the chemical, you know, something that can cause your digestion system problem. Okay. Then this uh, the wheat. What the good does to your body is easy to eat all kind of wheat, the bread and blah, blah. And then it's a, it, the more you consume, you know, like a Westerner, they consume from their baby, you know, a little bit like a girl, like a, a child until adult. But more likely when they that 30, 40, the accumulation of the wheat, it caught the celiac disease, the celiac disease. It, uh, you know, your intestine will get damaged by the the, the, the gluten. That like stick it, and then it don't let your body process it the nutrition. That's how the celiac disease start. So we look into that. Uh, when you have the gluten, gluten intolerance, it caught the gut leak. You know, damage the tight junction, those kind of thing. It, it triggered inflammation, contain the low nutrition, inhibit it. You know, prevent it from absorption of the nutrients because your intestine wall is not functioning. And then you got more, it make you fat because the more decaminated, decaminated, so the food doesn't process. You know, you don't have nutrition, you get all these a lot of carb, carbohydrate, you can stack it up and then, then your body just start popping up. So that's what happening, what green that to you. So the celiac seed is the side and symptom you got diarrhea, constantly diarrhea. You got fatigue, you got weight loss, borrowed abdomen pain, you know, all these things and it's skin rash. It it is it, a sign of you eating too much of wheat. Just if you can back up or slow it down or eat more right, you probably can help a lot. So the gluten intolerance, you know, the 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 leaky gut that what I just talked about is it you it you got the look like a dementia on your brain, you just slower Difficult thinking, you get sinus all the time, you get thyroid problem, you get joy problem, and then, you know, pancreas, you know, the fatigue of your kidney. No kind of thing, it's accumulation, it's the diabetes, it pretty much common of the, it creating all the problem too. So anyway, we're gonna go to the sweet cartel. Sweet cartel, it means in Thai cooking, it's sugar, something sweet, sugar, but many, many things that we don't do in Thai cooking. So sugar have, you know, mainly in my cooking is palm sugar. 
I use a lot of palm sugar. I don't do raw sugar at all because it's too expensive to handle, and I'm not sure it's safe. Because if you go to, if you use raw sugar, and the raw sugar that come from sugar cane, you got problem, big problem there. Because you got a lot, you got three things that in you in that process. You got sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide they come from the burning the leaf. You know when they have the sugar cane and phosphoric acid, they put the chemical in there to, you know, polish it, you know. And then when you polish the rye to become white and the rye it becomes soft, then they put calcium hydroxide into the system. That what is the problem is all those chemicals, it doesn't go out, it doesn't disappear. It's still in there that every time you do it, you eat it. So mostly, uh, we I do a lot of raw honey too. You know the honey I cook uh, my salad dressing. You pretty much I use instead of sugar I use honey, and uh, my uh, lamb. You know my lemonade, Thai lemonade. We use lamb and raw honey and some salt. So to get it to add up, we have enough sweet in the drink. So, and then the uh, sweet from the fruit. So, agave, nectar, malad, you know, maple syrup. We don't use them in Thai cooking because it's too overwhelming and the taste is too distinct and they cannot balance the taste. That's the big problem with that because you have its own, like, you, you know, its it own standing property. Which is it, like a maple tie up, is sweet, have a uh, fragrance in there, have aromatic. And then when you try to combine with all this, fish sauce with all this, uh, some goody, like a oyster sauce, like soy sauce, and it doesn't eliminate the, the maple side up, you know, the, the, the smell. And the taste because in Thai cooking you don't want that because it's overwhelming. You got soy sauce overwhelming, fish sauce overwhelming, and now everything, every everything is fighting. So <laughs> instead of get a good thing and you go, oh what the hell is that? <laughs> so just be careful with that. And then uh, refined sugar in the lucky in the next lecture, I think I talk about refined sugar in depth to <clears throat> what happened to all these things. And then artificial sweetener, that is the no-no in Thai cooking. Because why do you put a chemical in your body? Because everything that process, they have to put the chemical in and you get a chemical out. Yeah. Strictly with palm sugar. Palm sugar is the best because the palm sugar is collect, collect the nectar either from coconut milk or palm and then collect that juice and then the accumulation of those juice they cook you know, to get the water out, that's all you get. You don't, you don't have, they don't add anything in, except when you go to, they call palm sugar, to see the hard one, that they, they combine that with the, you know, the cane, sugar cane, to make it hard. So just be careful with the sugar, what kind of sugar you want to use. If you use, uh, you know, the leaf fine sugar, I use brown sugar. It's a lot of brown sugar, not white sugar. You got brown sugar, they put a lot back into the system. And when it's a little bit better because they have three or four processes to heat it up, a lot of thing is kind of, if you, the chemical in the ticket label, either you cook it or you put heat into the system. So. That how it it can you know change because they take the water out, they do things, no kind of you know chemical reaction. So the bad way is start to stick with all natural. That what my cooking is, everything is natural. So the cooking oil, the cooking oil is a lot of problem in Thai cooking because people try to use the coconut oil. You know, you can try to use the 
grape seed oil, avocado oil, you know, sunflower oil, all these things. You can use it because it's too overwhelming and then it's decide. You know, it have after taste, you know, and if you burn them that then everything screw. Because you have after taste, you have wheel aroma, it can balancing the taste and it stand out it especially the <laughs> coconut oil. It everything you taste you, you taste like an oil. The olive oil you you it, it, it's okay, but we're gonna talk about burning point, you know. In Thai cooking, you know, you use vegetable oil, palm oil, but I don't do palm oil because it, it's it's a, it's a, a non sage you know. You have the what do you call it? something that is still there, the, the saturated and trans fats in vegetable oil. The canola oil is from come from the flower, so it started in about. 1970, the Canadian people, the one that raised a lot. The one that we have in Costco usually come from Canada. The canola oil is taste like no, no taste, no flavor, no odor. It's neutral. It's the bed for Thai cooking. Thing that you have to consider about cooking oil, the temperature and burning point. Temperature, I mean, you're cooking them, what kind of temperature you need to cook, you know. In Thai cooking, you stir fry, you go medium heat or high heat, they go fast. And if you don't careful, you pass the burning point at any of, the, at any of these oil burning point, it becomes toxic. So, to be careful with it. In changing the taste, that changing color, all these kind of things, you have to be careful. Especially the cape seeds. If you try to cook something, it becomes dark and good and dark and dark and changing your color. And then tan fat and saturated fat and then cholesterol. Some they do, some they don't. But I don't pay attention that much I, because I use canola oil. I pity more safe on that. So the burning point is what we could talk about. You know, you if you talk about the plant fire, plant fire is 485 degrees. This fire is 320 to 365. So that the temperature is hot. And then the, you will you bake in the oven 365 and she can go further out. This is a standard cooking temperature. Suppose you do, you know, stir fry, and you use, you know, lot, right? You okay with that? If, if you use extra virgin oil, you got three twenty five. You pan fry that, you okay? You know, you coconut oil, all these things is, is okay because the, the 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 cooking temperature that much, but you are. Burning point is very high, but when you start to do deep fry, that going to be a little bit tricky. If you use extra virgin oil to deep fry it, just remember 320. You have only 325. That means you cook five to ten minutes. You get a part burning point, and that burning point become toxic. You look at the canola oil. Canola oil is 450 degree. You better off. If uh, you buy 365, you still 450. So everything you do, just be careful, just understand the three things, pan fry, deep fry, and bake. You know, if you bake something, it, you extra virgin oil, you automatically within five or ten minutes start burning. When your oil burning, it become black. And you, because it's only 325, your oven has to be 365, it's hotter. So all those things, be careful with what, what you do. Vegetable oil is okay, but when you use the oil, that it, it caught problem. So just be careful with that. Because the temperature was the time. You set it up the temperature in 265. But the longer you cook, the more accumulation within your specimen that you cook, if the temperature keep on increasing, 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 that's why you get the thing burn. You get the thing overcooked. That 
using the temperature that you said that the temperature that they measured in inside specimen. So the temperature was a time that really, very important. You know, the, the longer you go, the hotter it gets and the thing can burn faster. Okay, the measurement, the management is uh, it's not too big in Thai cooking because if you come from the baking people, the bake people, they will measure everything uh, exactly. You know, one cup, half cup, one pinch, and two tablespoons, blah, blah, blah. In Thai cooking, it's different. You know, the Thai, Thai cooking, in my class especially, we use the palate, you know, your tongue, the whole mouth there, to taste the food. And we would go through that. And uh, the recipe that we give it to you, that approximation. Why is approximation? Because every ingredient is changed. Every manufacturing, every year is different, you know. Even though the setup of the manufacturing process is there, it's the same process, but your raw ingredient that come every year is different. So the lease all come out slightly different. You know, sometimes you got the, you know, palm sugar sweeter, sometimes you got palm sugar, it's not too sweet because of the, depend on the year, the climate, whatever it is. Anyhow, we're going to go through that too. And then the, in my class, you know, when you talk about cup, usually we measure either the liquid or solid by the cup. I call it out the by the cup. It's easy for the student to understand. Okay, I want a cup of this. I want a cup of this. It depends on you. If you kind of go, oh, I measure. Oh, how much is that it weigh? Oh, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, those kind of thing. And make it more complicated, more mm -hmm. difficult. Because the only thing you put in there, you fret ingredient, you use your tongue to measure it. In my class, everybody knows how to do it. Because I will cook them more, and then I will make them taste my food, and then open it up their palates by training them how to detect taste. And then whatever you put in there, you see it, you smell it, you taste it, you will know what it tastes like that. But the first thing that I open it up their palate, they have to understand detecting simultaneous effect. We're going to go through that. Okay? This is how the Leo measurement in Thai food supposed to be. You know, a lot of people, they say, oh, oh, Thai food is good. How good is it? Can you explain? You don't, because you don't know. You never come to Japan class. You will not know. So, and then they say, okay, uh, tell me how you do it. Did it the way you supposed to do? You yeah, understand that every part of your tongue detects some, you know, taste differently. If you use sweet you, at the tip of your tongue, so sweet at the tip of your tongue, this is what is sweet yeah, at the tip of your tongue here. And then the salt, this is a loud edge of your tongue. You put the salt. If you don't believe, you try the salt, open your mouth really wide and put the salt in there. You hardly taste the salt because you don't, it, it go past to where the, the the button to take to taste, and then you taste some. You know, suddenly you got all sour because you the saliva coming out and copper bringing back and pull it back inside you. The, then you can taste. So that how the you know the position to where the the salty, the sweet. You know, then you got the sour, the sour. You know, on the side of your tongue, the bitter, uh, all the you know, almost to your throat. And then the bodily just cover the whole tongue here. Then you have spicy. Spicy, if you come around, you lift. And then the tip of your tongue is just heat to come out. And lingling, this is a lot of people don't understand when they say lingling. Lingling means something is stay longer than one minute. It's good. Usually when you eat Thai food, Good Thai food, it will last 10, 20 minutes after you eat for a while. You walk there, you doing things, it's still, it's still mouthful in there. That it's called lingling. And lingling, it's it going to change, you know, 
from sour to sweet and make it linger from one another. That's why it kind of simultaneously affects you got really full flavor out of that the linger when you bow onto the bed and the linger when you eating the food. Okay, this is one thing that I talk about simultaneously, simultaneously affect. So far, I don't think uh, anybody can explain beside me. This is a lot of my students, they wow, that information was so good. I said, this is how we do them. A lot of Thai people know what it is, you know, simultaneously affect, but how you going to detect it? You have to learn to open up your palate. So in my class, I will cook something and then I will open it up my student palate to learn, detect all of it and simultaneously affect, you know, not that, oh, something, oh, sour, I said it's sour, sour, I said it's sour, and then boom. Oh, I test five, blah, blah, blah. No, in fact, it simultaneously affect because you don't want the jumping taste because the jumping taste will take the beauty of the Thai cooking. You know, the simultaneously affect that the more common in Thai cooking, you got, that's why you got a mouthful. This is why the Thai food stand out way out than anybody else because if you know how to balance the taste, you will have the good Thai food. And especially when you learn to cook with me. Okay, like this soup. This soup they call Tom Kha. Tom Kha have sour, buttery, spicy, salty, sweet, bitter, and lingo. What do you mean? Because the, the, the bitter is come from, you, you know, your vegetable, your galanga, something that more tanning the, from the leaf. The buttery is from co coconut milk. The sour from the lamb juice, you know, lemon lamb juice. And then you have the spice, you have chili. And then you have salt, it comes from fish sauce. You could sweet it, come from the sugar. And the lingering, a minute you eat, you chew it in your mouth, you just, it just stay like to where your throat is. Every bite for you will, you will hear that. You will, you, you will feel that. And then when you, after you eat 10, 20 minutes, still have in there. But the most important, when you put in your mouth, you know, when I cook, the step in sequence, you don't put sour in the cooked food because it's going to become bitter. This is not this bitter. This bitter come from, you know, the uh, the uh, herbs or vegetable. This is the bitter. It come from burning. They are different. So it's... it's if you understand it, this is what they call it. When you put this soup in your mouth, first thing you're going to taste is sour and then something buttery. You go, you go from here, you come back here, and then you go to there. The spice started coming out, and then you got a little bit of salt in there, and then a little bit of sweet, you know, to, to go in there. Then a little bit bitter behind that when you swallow, we have lingo. This is it, it's an instrument of this, it already, I mean, calculated, put it into water, you can understand, you understand it easily. And then try to do that when, in my cookbook, because my cookbook have, you know, the the control point, what the food should taste like. This is what it's all about. So if you have a good command of good Thai food, this is what you want to learn. You want to know, you want to understand them, and then try to use it perfectly. No jumping taste. Like you put in your mouth, boom, you got too sweet. And after that, you don't taste anything else. That one of the Thai cooking, if you have the northern people food, you will see a lot of sweet. Sweet comfort. Everything they cook, sweet comfort. For whatever reason, we don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> probably influence from the Burmese, that's what it's all about. But, you know, if you go to Sao, Everything spicy, you know. I mean, if you take something, then the spice jump out, and then you kind of cannot cannot find the other thing else because it's too spicy. That what is not good either. So, just learn to understand it, man. Just remember is have the lingering taste. Use your palate to taste the food, and your ingredient is according to your taste.
whatever you're going to do. Okay? Now is when I say the food in medicine, I got a lot of fight with all these people. Oh yeah, right, okay, you go eat McDonald's. They are the medicine, medicine too, okay. Whatever, the, but I try to tell you the food in medicine, I got a good chunk of people then. Yes, the food in medicine. Because any of your medicine, the pill, or the, it comes from food. And then they process it. But did it you eat is natural. Then you won't get sick easily because you got the natural defense. And whatever it come to your body, you have natural defense system. So the food in medicine just let it sink in. Okay? In Thai food, it's a balanced nutrition chart in Thai food because it, more of the time we eat about 30% grain, 25% vegetable, 20 percent fruit because Thailand has a lot of fruit. We can eat fruit all day long because and all year long. Many kinds of fruit in Thailand. And then the protein. Protein like the chicken, pork, fish, those kind of thing. You Thai food it doesn't have big chunk of the meat. Unless you're rich, you have people that you know like to eat more meat. So then we add more meat in there, but uh, basically pretty much 15% of your whole total meal. You've got a small piece of, of meat, you've got a small piece of vegetable, but a lot of it is so, usually we don't eat that much meat in, in the dish when we cook, because it's, uh, first of all, it's expensive for us, but I don't know for me, not, but it's just a matter of uh, the balance nutrition stuff you know, in Thai cooking. So that's what we follow, that method, you know, in order to get your inside, you know, inside of your body, it should well maintained. You know, everything have to do with your organ. You know, pretty much Thai food, because all herb medicinal, it go right to the organ, with part of thing, you know, good for what, organically, if you study into it. And, you know, if you go to the Thai medicinal, you know, Thai medicinal food, they have the book in English. So if you go to Thailand, you can find it easily. You go to, they, they sell it every, every bookstore. In here, I don't know, I bring my back from Thailand. So, and they have many versions now it's about Thai medicinal, if you go to, you know, Thai medicinal medicine, Thai traditional medicine, you got those people sell the kind of book. It's very, very useful. But some of the ingredients, some of the, you know, herb, they don't have it here, but you have a lot of things here that you can do your dish successfully. Eating by the climate. So more Thai people understand, you know, when your body getting hot and cold or rainy, you know, or what kind of weather that uh, uh, you have to face with. And most of Thai people know, okay, like it cold weather, like, you know, really cold, cold, cold for us. Like the, when the temperature go down to like one digit in Celsius. So usually we eat something that more like buttery and spicy to keep you know, body warm, keep up energy, those type of things. And then if you if, if the weather is too hot, like in the summer, we eat something sour, bitter, or something bland, like a soup, something that bland, soup, not too much of spice, and no buttery inside, those kind of things. It's just, just, just totally different. And if, when it's rainy, we eat something a little bit more salty and spicy. So, if, one of these class I will tell what is what kind of food it is, but this is I want you to know that uh, people eat by the climate, especially Thai people. The rainy weather, we eat sour and spicy. The cold air, you know, chill air, you eat sour and spicy. And then in the evening, that's the most fun. You got the food a little is a little bit sweeter and then spicier.
that me more than time in the evening when people like go out, you know. But oh, I'm going to go for the drink with my friend, but we don't go to the bar. <laughs> we go to the food shop, you know. Go to the food vendor that they sell the food out or on the street. We eat street food, and that it have to be special food, like a like a small mini restaurant that they can do many kind of food, and especially we call the food for alcohol. That means it's spicy, it's stronger, you know, spicier, it's more meat, and sometimes many many times not sometimes they use exotic ingredient like frog, snake. You name it, <laughs> they, will, they will cook that for you with the spicy thing that you, with the very spicy dish. But you can drink it all night long, talk to your friend, all kind of things. So for us, like, we got, you know, four or five of us, and we, we eat from, you know, we start from four o'clock in the evening or five o'clock in the evening until three o'clock in the morning. And then we go home drunk. <laughs> But you always full. You eat all kind of things because it's, because when the people that know you, they have something exotic. They will uh, ask you if you want it, and then you you say yes. And what is it you like? You want more spicy, more deep, more that you, you can ask them. They will give it to you. They will add it to you. But it's the same at my restaurant. You to be I used to own the restaurant in Thai, it's in in Petaluma, California. So. If I have a gang of people that are coming in and then they want to sit and drink and that kind of thing, and then I offer them some exotic food, you know, exotic ingredient, and they, they seem to like it. So if, if you go to Thailand, you can, you see that everywhere. Well, you know, not just the one plate meal. So you, you have to find a shop that they can do a lot more thing. So just be aware of eating by the climate. That pretty much Thai food. We every time, you know, and we all the time we implement that to help the body to deal with all the the change, you no know, better. So dealing with the spice in it, some people, you know, when it's too spicy, they get the food they buy into the uh, they buy into the chili. And it was exporting spice, you know. And then because it is Thai spice, it linger and last longer. You know, you go slowly going up, creeping up. When you leave the plateau, it stay. And by the time the weakness starts slowly, come down very slow. Not the same as the, you know, the Mexican chili or Korean spice, so totally different because the Thai is more simultaneously effect, you know, and then the going up smooth, stay, eat the potato, still smooth, and then coming down is still smooth. So that means it lasts longer, the spice. When it's too spicy in your mouth, what do you do? So first thing, you eat the plain light, eat a lot more plain light, just chop the plain light in your mouth, so it will cool it down. If not, some people eat bread, but I don't do bread because we don't, we are gluten free. So we don't really do that much bread. So, and we don't, in the restaurant, we don't have bread either. So, and you, some people drink milk. The milk's okay, but it doesn't do much because you have buttery in there and then you drink milk. In this, the buttery support to absorbing the spike but it's not that much. So, but it helps. And then Thai lemonade. Thai lemonade have honey, have plum, and it cool. It will cool it down, you know. And have salt in there. It cool it down and pull it out faster. The spite. You know, calm the spite faster. And then you take a sweet sugar or chocolate. That is sweet thing. It, it, it get It help, you know, eliminating spice in your mouth. And uh, if you have anything else, you can do it. You know, everything else, it doesn't go because you just have the mouthful of it. It's a full-blown spike. 
what you do, you know, you know, what, what do you do? You just tip yourself, bend it down, tip yourself upside down, make sure that your head is lower than your knees or half of your knees, make sure your head is bowed down. Then open your mouth and let the saliva start coming up and let it, let it come up. That way it will eliminate the spice faster but it actually is difficult, but it currently is when the when the saliva coming out, take all the you know spike coming out from your mouth. So and another thing, honey, is pretty good to put in your mouth and hold it. Don't don't swallow it. Just hold like a cockle in your mouth, play with it, like a sack on it, those kind of thing. That helps. So the 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 better thing that to do is eat plain lights. And the last thing you want to do is to bend over and let the saliva coming out. That that uh, key to get rid of the spice. Okay? <laughs> Cooking equipment. Now, most of the people are more concerned about oh, what kind of pan that I use, what kind of pot that I use uh, for Thai cooking. You can use anything. You know, for for us, you can use anything. And the kind of stove I use, I needed a portable stove. Uh, you know, it's a built-in thing. I use this in my cooking class when I do private cooking class. If I have to set up somewhere else, somebody else. So I will use this, this kind of thing. And the main thing is you want it in your uh, kitchen. It's uh, pesto and mortar, mortar and pesto. And then the knife, you know. A lot of people, they say, oh, yeah, when I have the restaurant, if somebody come in and try to sell the 600 uh, 700 uh, dollar per knife, and with the crafting, with the fancy, and I said, so embarrassed. I didn't want to tell him, you know, my nice here, the Thai knife is cut about two and a half bucks, three bucks the most, and can cook anything. And this is very sharp too, if you know, when you fold by it, it's very good. This knife will last you probably good five to ten years if you don't, you know, let the, your handle wet too much, so it will last. So you have stove, you have, you know, pot or pan, or, and then the steamer, this kind of, you do the, the stacked steamer, eat the bed when you do like a steam, you know, curry, those type of thing. So anything else, pretty much, you don't do that much in, 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 not the big thing in Thai cooking, you know, for fancy pot and pan, these and that. No, you don't use it. Just one night you can cook the whole thing. So then you can cut the cutting board, those type of thing that you can use in Thailand. We have many kind of cutting board. Nice mixing board that what you need. Sometimes you have to marinate mixing. And then the stainer, stainer is a lot. And this is another thing that I use a lot. This is not stainer. This is when you fry something, you put this, you know, uh, it look like a stainer, but it's not stainer. It cover your 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 pants, you know, in order to prevent them from scratching. That's spat. They call spat spat or something. I don't I don't really know that I said that. I can use them, but sometimes we don't call them. We have so many words, but we call we call them cover, but it's a spash cover. That in English, so in well, Thai people sometimes we don't use that, but we do. You use a lower shallow pan, that kind of thing when you fry them. That's what you need. Okay, and then a light cooker. The right cooker is, if you have, it's the best because. You just put the rice in them, wash real good, at least three times you see the water is clear. 
then you put whatever the right do you put in there and then you use your finger you know these are the finger the index and finger they say oh, a quarter of water above the rice that means you have to spread them evenly first and then you measure it you touch the right you know one two three point you know and the right should be above your nail you know not your knuckle a lot of people talking about the knuckle, you know, knuckle, not the knuckle, the nail, you know, above your nail anytime. When you do it, it's above your nail. And one more thing, if you have the old rice, you have to add a little bit more water above, a little bit more, you know, you don't have to go to the knuckle. The knuckle, you got too much water then your right will become muchy, okay? Above your fingernail. And you have more right and more old right, a little bit more. So if you have the new right, you got only on the nail, okay? And three point, you have to check three point. Make sure you have that, you touch it, not just punch it into the right, no. When you touch the light, it goes slowly, you touch it, it's just three spots. That means your water is equal, equally even, you know, then your right will come out good. Okay? That's the techniques. <coughs> Thai cooking concept. It's a lot more involved, if not the same as the Chinese, you know, especially when I do my, you know, it's totally different. So a lot of people have it own, their own technique, but the concept should be there. You know, everybody have concept, but the way I do them is different. So that's why my food stand out. So you talk about aroma, flavor, suitable texture, know the outcome of the taste using the herb and effects yeah, effectively, keep food integrity and presenting a serving style. Aroma in meaning when you start doing the food, like let's do the stir fry. Aroma from stir fry, you're going to fry the garlic first, that aroma coming in. And then you're going to add the flavor like lemon glass or something else and that have more aroma and the flavor to go in there, you know. And then when you stir fry like a vegetable, you know, have to be suitable texture. Suitable texture that means it's not overcooked or not undercooked. You know, like white people, white people will cook vegetable until it's dead, absolutely dead, <laughs> you know, like a machi. And you lose the taste, you lose the integrity of the vegetable. So we don't do that in Thai cooking. In thai cooking, when the, you do vegetable, when the color change, we turn off the heat when you do stir fry. And the texture, the meaning, you know, when you do which sequence, or which one go first, soft vegetable go first or hard vegetable go first. Now let's take the kale, for example, you have the leaf and you have a stem. And some people have to peel the stem. It's good to peel them, you know. But for me, I don't. I eat the whole thing. I wash real good, and it's smart, and then it's light. And then uh, when you start stir fry, you fry the garlic. You put your meat in there, and then the vegetable you're going to put in there, the kale. You put the stem into fur, and you fry until it's starting soft. Then you balance the taste. You put the leaf in there, and then you stir it. When the color of the leaf change from from regular green to biking, you turn off the heat and that you're done. You have balance in the taste, you got texture, you got aroma, you got a flavor. And you cook, if you cook more than that, it killed it. So it's just the technique, it's simple. If you go to my class, you will know what we talking about because when you do the demo, I, I when I do the demo, I explain more. When you do it yourself, I can I can see it. I go around, usually my class, I go around to assist when the students do in their thing and to give them feedback and to correct when they make mistakes. 
So and then be caution to them what kind of mistake they can create it. But when they see the demo, they take the test, they eat, they eat my food, then they see okay when they duplicate it easily. But now I setting up the the challenge. It now I go to do Zoom cooking. Zoom cooking that means you cannot taste my my food, but you can see it, you cannot smell it, but you can smell your own food. You can taste your own food. And could be dictated by me via Zoom. That's the difference. And uh, all the the class, you we're not going to give you a lecture on aspect of Thai food. You could go to my website thaisen.com and study all those. You know, to take a look at it. What we're talking about is really, really the good knowledge of Thai cooking. It have skill have all kind of thing, and then if you have a question, when I take in the cloud, you can ask questions. So I will respond. I mean, answer to all your questions. The, the cloud will be coming up pretty soon because in my cooking class, we assume it's going to be maximum 24 people because this way I can do all the. I mean, I mean, do the feedback. And it can do last two hours or two hours and a half the most. And two dish, only two dish. If you can go faster than that, it's good. But it, I have to make sure everybody, I, I see what they do and I can dictate it. So what to do, how to adjust the food, you know, adjusting the taste. Uh, and you guys have to do the chopping yourself. We will give you the list where to chop. You can order online or kind of thing. We can do that. We will do that. And then uh, using the herb effectively. There's a lot of herb in Thai cooking. Some you can cook, some you can't, like the leaf. You know, like a holy basil, you can cook them. But when you try to use basil, you know, in the curly or some, yeah, like put the basil in the curly. Most people, they put the basil in too fast, too early, and then it become black and have no flavor, have no taste. So when to use them and what kind of herb you use and what kind of did you do. So very, very specific, very, very important there because that the herb is have so many medicinal. If you cook them, you don't know how to use them effectively, you kill the whole thing. That what you defeat the purpose, okay? Keep food integrity. Keep food integrity, that means that if you cook chicken, you should take the chicken. Not if you cook chicken, you take like a duck because it burns, <laughs> or you cook the chicken like a, it's something else, you know? If you have to maintain the characteristic of the meat, like if you cook pork, if you slice too thin, then you don't take the pork. You take all the flavor that go in there, and sometimes it like a, where the pork, <laughs> you have to take off your clothes and go dig into your dead. So where the pork, <laughs> that's not how it works. You know, you have to have the bite side good, you know, like a, cut the pork. If you cook the chicken, you should be able to take the chicken. So a lot of people do soup in the chicken, and you don't take the chicken, you take like a cardboard because you overcook them. That's really, really important how long you cook. Because in my class, I will tell when the color, what kind of color you're looking for, and when do you put more thing in there, and then when you finish your dish, those kind of thing. And then representing the serving style. This is where you separate the good food and the bad food and the rich and the famous. Because the higher, the more expensive, you will see the food it look exotic, look really good looking. You know, that you your artistic to do it. If you go to my, uh, one of my uh, video, you will see my dish that I make. It is a collection of it. And you see every dish is, is presenting nicely. That, the more you present, the, the nicer you present, the, the price is higher. You know, that's how it's defining the lot of things. And when you cook yourself, use your own style where you see it. You know, three color, 
opposite in contrast, and then the compromise with your plate. Those kind of things. You look look at it in my cooking class. I, I, uh, I have that section in the real cooking class. So this is a cooking concept. You learn something, I hope. So let's discussing about terminology because in in the U.S. it's a lot of problem because the people didn't understand pretty much and then get confused when you try to do the class. Say like uh, organic and all natural. Mostly the organic, all natural and organic is the same. The, the process that they do the same. The pro the the. The difference is organic, they have to certify by USDA because USDA tell them the procedure, what to do, what to do, deed, what deed, what that, what that, what that. But all natural people, they do the same, but they didn't get certified because they didn't want to go into the, you know, the rule and regulation to all those kind of things. They're willing to sell their food a little bit lower than the organic. But for me, I see it equally the same because all, new, all natural is just as good. It depends on the, on the farm who doing that because if you go, you know, to the farm that use chemical, but all natural, they don't do chemical. They do, all, they do you, you know, the, the, the animal byproduct, you know, uh, fertilizer. They don't use chemical, the same thing, but uh, organic, you have to be certified by the USDA. That's why they call organic. They sell more for you. And then FDA and USDA, okay? FDA, they make the rule. USDA is implement the rule. That's the difference. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, you got to get approved by FDA. Yeah, the FDA have to be, they are already approved. The USDA they want to do the implementation. That when you try to sell the salt, you all those kind of thing, and then they go. It's a lot of rule and regulation that you have to follow. When they did my sauce, is mm, go through all kind of thing, and then you have to go to, to the UC David, to, you know, to get accepting, you know, get the process approved. So it's just a lot of step and sequence you have to do, but that's the way it goes. So then the, the, the non-GMO project, this is a lot of thing that, you know, in the U.S., that, that why they have to certify GMO because they use GMO. If you go to Thailand, you go to other places, they don't do GMO because they, everybody protect their own seed. And they don't do like a mat, like natural, you know, generic uh, changing, but it's some fruit and vegetable you begin to see it changing the dynamics of the, uh, you know, the food, like papaya, you got papaya, it, it cannot keep for a long time, but they re-engineered it to where uh, you don't get uh, more easily, those type of thing, but it is it, it, being approved by Thai people, it, 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 I think it's done by the uh, the Dutch people that one that did the uh, changing the the they call it, it changing the papaya in Thai they call the Malacca Holland is papaya salad from Holland, but it that how they re engineer it to where it. it that can get more and keep longer. And the gluten-free and gluten, that I already say that to you, you get gluten-free, you know, you don't have wheat. And gluten is something stick. Palm sugar or coconut sugar, that's the hot and the soft, you have to understand. People, oh, you will get, oh, palm sugar. And they go in and say, oh, did it say palm sugar? Everything, every packet say palm sugar. But I will dig them, it hard. Why it hard? This one is in the jar is soft. So the hard is what they do, they mix the palm sugar in there to make it hard. So that means you don't have a 100% palm sugar. 
I use soft, you know, the soft type. The soft type is 100% palm sugar. Okay, you no know, mix with other sugar. And then acidic and acid. Acid is something you can eat. <laughs> you know, you, you will die. Acid is something you can eat. You know, like a, a chromic acid or kind of thing like a vitamin C. So in, I think the next, uh, the next uh, presentation, you know, the next lecture, is we talk about acid and acid, that kind of thing. And then the fish sauce and fish oil. We use fish sauce, we, we don't use fish oil at any Thai cooking because I don't know where the fish oil come from. A lot of, you know, the, the Westerners, they say, oh yeah, put the fish oil in there. Fish oil in there. What? what? <laughs> we don't have fish oil. What, are you going to travel with it? Oh. That kind of thing. No, we don't do that because of fish oil. If some people eat, you know, the vitamin, blah, blah, but we don't do that because it's too stinky for us. If we do fish oil, I don't know. I don't like the taste. He tasted it. Oh, no, what is that for? Because my student bring it to me here, the fish oil, but no, this is what they We don't do in Thai cooking. And then the chef and the cook. You know, a lot of people, a lot of restaurants in, you know, especially in Northern California or these people, when they say, oh, they have, uh, well, we have the restaurant, and, oh, that she the chef. I say, oh, well, so interesting. You cook too, right? Yeah. And the chef, did you create it? Yeah. And if you can train people how to do that, yeah. Can you manage the whole restaurant? Yeah, because I own it, right? But the cook, you only cook. One thing they give to you, you cook the, you cook that, you cook that. And the chef will create it and maintain it to where every time you cook, the chef cook, the food come out exactly the same. If you say the cook, mostly they put it, put that, the fit salt, put sugar, you know, Every time they come out, not the same. It's go like this part, go up, go down, go there. If you have the chef cook, every time they do it, it's the same. And the chef will give more perfection to your food. The cook, you know, like most of these restaurants, they copy from one another, they learn from Chinese, they learn from each other. But the chef, pretty much, they know what to do, what not to do, how to do them, how to do equipment, you know, the safety, the food, and another thing, the big safety thing chef have to know. Like me, I have to certify how to maintain, you know, safety, yeah, from the safety point of view, you don't keep people food poisoning or you don't keep you, or low quality food. Is something happening, what to do if you are cook? You can't do anything, you know, in in the restaurant. That's why the, the chip is it, different level. You're, if you see the chip, don't call him a cook. <laughs> you see the cook, okay, yeah, you are the cook. So no, if you call him the chip, the chip is fine, but the more, more likely you will get challenged it's a lot more. Because when you call it the chip, they should know everything about it, their food. If you talk to the cook and the cook call, tell them, tell it's a chef, but they can't explain it. They say, oh, no, you're not. So, and we don't pay you more than that. So, no kind of thing. And mostly you have to, if they say the chef do in that as long, you have to respect them because they know what they do, that their thing. If you say the cook at that as long, you know, it can be anything, fly. This is not insult the cook, but it just makes the distinction between the chef and the cook. They're different. They're different, you know, breed. So, in this is my cookbook layout. I, in my cookbook, this is what you're going to see. You know, one recipe one picture that no mistake, what are you cooking, this, this, that, this. And then in the recipe, if we talk about the dish and give you a choice, you know, if you don't have this, you can use that, you don't, you can use carrot, you can use, you know, 
cucumber instead of papaya. You can do the same thing. And then the ingredients. So you see the like a two chili, four clove blood. This is just for you that you need it that much or less or more. Because we're going to use balancing the taste. We can use the taste. That way, how the measurement of these ingredients come from. You know, like when you buy thing, you have a whole bunch of it. And they say, oh, we coffee it for that, you know. Usually, I just you prep the whole thing. And then you cook. If you don't use it next time, you can keep it. You know, we, got, we have a procurement how to keep them fresh for a week or two. If you have m more, like, you know, root, herb, you can keep it for months. If you know the technique, and in my class, I tell them, in the lecture, I have to, so you can learn from that. And specifically, the hint, do, and don't. This is not any cookbook tell you that, you know, because that is the key. People screw up, try to do things. But if you do this, follow the hint, you know, do and don't, then you, more likely, you don't make mistakes. And the step to sequential, that means you build up the flavor and texture in the development of it. Okay? That's different. In, instead of you see a cooking class, oh yeah, put it, put that, put that, put it, put it, put that, oh, a bit of this, a bit of that, and taste it, oh, it's good. And you say, yeah, how good is that? So, <laughs> cooking, but you can't see them, you can smell them. <laughs> and then, oh, the smile, eh, it's good. How good is that? Can you explain? What are you tasting? Can you tell the characteristic of the your vegetable, what it like? Those kind of things. You have to be able to tell. So, more than the more of you, oh, oh, yeah, it's good. And then, it's gone. So, what? It, it makes no sense. A lot of people say, oh, I take the let's be and try to put blah, 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 without knowing the basic, the fundamental. Then you can't do it because it's more the time you screw up all the dish and then, oh, yeah, Thai food no good. It's difficult to cook because you didn't know the fundamental of it. Just learn. You have to learn. Okay? And expectation. So the ex expectation, meaning the control point. You know, when you cook something, you should know what it tastes like instead of throwing it, throwing it, throwing it, throwing it, put your mouth, oh, it's good. What it tastes like? Huh? <laughs> what it tastes like? Huh? Those kind of thing. It doesn't make sense. So you have to know expectation of it. Most Thai people, when they cook, they know what it's supposed to take. Like, oh, it'll be sour, or it'll be sweet, or it'll be the bitter, or that. But difficult to get to find the people to find a simultaneously effect how the thing affecting the food, you know, simultaneously. No too sour, jumping taste. No. What are you detecting in your palate? Boom, 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 boom. This is, this, is, this is, if you don't have the palate to taste that, then you have to learn. If you, people like me, I, it comes to me naturally. When I take the food, boom, 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 I pretty much tell what is in there too, specifically. And then what the taste look like, how it, how balanced, it's not balanced. Is some people, they say, oh, I want sweeter food or sour food. That is, is your preference. But when you're cooking with me, with my class, you got to follow me. I want the sour food. I want you to, that is to train you how to train, to taste the food. And after that, you can change whatever you want to do. The more you likely you doing that, doing that. But this is classical type. Thai cooking. This is a fundamental. If you got this, you cook for anybody that that take your food, the Thai, the whoever it is, they will compliment you. This is that good, as good. This is good because you got the full blown of it and you understand it. You can explain it, and you will be a king for that day or a queen for that day. Okay, here the complete available available ingredients. This is on the back of my cookbook. So we got about 11 pages or 12 pages. It has a picture, have English name, have Thai pronunciation, and have a property, you know. You know, the, 
the property and to uh, and the goodie, you know, and then the description of it, how to use them. Okay, well, we don't we don't know how to prep them. We got to prep them. You will see in the class and what kind of material you want to choose that will be in the class. Because if I explain it, I will be here for years. You still have to sit there for years, so no, it doesn't make sense. Okay. And then the next session is going to be recognition of variation of a Thai dish. Because a Thai dish is not just part Thai, there are many, 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 many dishes, it's about thousands of the dish because it's a region of food. Because so every plate they do their own thing, but they're unique in one thing, no kind of thing. That we have to understand that this is Bangkok food. That's why we take the best of the best, put everything together, and then just to where we can eat. So the upcoming, you know, it it up it, it lie hand on like it, I call them Zoom cooking. It going to come up pretty soon. Hopefully by the end of the year, before the end of the year. So. I will set it up and then announce it and keep on following. You can go to my website, you know, or you can go to my Facebook. At the end of the video, I will tell you oh, what it is. And here it is the presentation. Yeah. Another thing is the, uh, if, when you go to the my website and go to under cookbook uh, cooking tab you know you will see all the information about it you want to see more about seeing what i do you can explore my website and if you go to my traveling you probably want to read the story because i do like three country at one and traveling writing story how the thing work based on my experience and how we deal with the problem. It's a funny thing and interesting and very, very helpful. Okay, here is something about me. You might want to adjust to, or maybe you didn't see from the previous uh, presentation, but here is about me. A little bit of that, so make sure that you see it. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully, this video enticed you. If it did, please share. You can follow us at, at thaiessence.com. T H A I E S S E N C E dot com. Or on, on the Facebook at Kun Pan, K H U N P H A N T. At, at Kunpan.
on, on the Facebook. And the YouTube is Classical Thai Cooking by Jeff Park. See you on the next video. Have a pleasant day. Until then, Cup and Cup.